It is working now. Wow. Good morning, everyone. So, I'm just looking over the group here real quick just to see if there's anything that I need to know about you before I start to get into some introductions. So, if you heard a cell phone go off just a minute ago, that was mine. And so, let me remind you, if you would, please uh, take your cell phones <clears throat> and put them away. Uh, turn them off, for sure, and we're going to have you bring them back out here shortly when we go through some uh, introductions of some of our uh, association apps. So, uh, I'm Ed Brown. I am, have a distinct honor to have been a past president of our association, the Enlisted Association of the National Guard. Is there anyone that's here for another association other than ours? Can I see a show of hands? Good. Well, we're on a roll here. It's my uh, distinct pleasure to introduce our current president of our association. Uh, her name is Karen Craig as president, but she is the former CSM, state CSM, for the great state of Arizona. Yeah, we, got, we have a couple back there. Everyone could clap to that if they wanted to, but uh, yeah. But uh, President Craig, just an incredible person, an uh, incredible lady that is just out here doing wonderful things for our association, and ultimately for each and every one of you, both soldiers and airmen. And so I'm not going to delay that any further, but ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, please, a warm welcome for our president, President Craig. Good morning, and welcome to Des Moines. So welcome to the Ingus 48th Conference. Um, so everybody here is a first timer. I'm assuming that's why you're in this room at this moment in time. Um, like to welcome you and kind of give you a brief overview of Ingus. So let me start out first and just ask a couple of questions, get a feel for the audience. So how many of you, if you are a current Ingus member, if you belong to Ingus, and I understand some of you may not, some of you may have been sent here and don't even know what Ingus is, and we understand that. So this, we're going to give you a little briefing about who we are and what we do. But how many of you are Ingus members? Please stand up. All right. That's a good number. Good number. All right. Thank you. Go ahead and sit down. Well, that may make our briefing go pretty short then. I won't have to go into much detail, but I do want to cover some things so that those of you who are here for the first time understand who we are and what we do. So let me go through, let's see. So we're going to cover, we're going to cover what we're going to cover. Uh, introductions, then I'll do a little brief about Ingus. We're going to talk about the conference, what you're here, what we do, and what you need to know. Uh, we also have because a lot of you are here on professional development orders. So you're probably E6s and below. So Ingus also has a junior enlisted committee. And so we will let the junior enlisted committee chair for Ingus come up and talk to you about some initiatives that she's got going on, their committee is doing. And then I'll turn it over and we'll wrap it up at the end with Chief Brown coming back up and talking. We'll dismiss everybody else who is not on PD first timers but not on PD and then Chief Brown will take back over as far as talking to you about the PD portion and give you a little orientation as far as that goes, okay? So that's the plan. Um, introduction, so right now we'll just introduce and if you would just stand up for a minute just so they can see who you are, I'll bring you back up later. This is Staff Sergeant Tika Britt from Alabama. Any Alabama out there? Okay, come on, make some noise. All right, and, and Tika is our uh, junior enlisted committee chair. With her is, you want to stand up? Adriana Collins, and Adriana is from Arkansas. Okay, okay, come on now. We are a, we are state-based association, and so states mean a lot to us, and when we hear our state, you got to speak up. All right. Um, so Chief Brown already introduced himself. I will let him introduce his team. And so I don't see, we were looking at having a couple of other 
The command sergeant major for Iowa is not here yet, but when she comes in, we'll let her come up and say a few words. All right, so let's get into um, Ingus, who we are. So we were founded in 1972 as an enlisted association. The idea was to a uh, number of NCOs in different, a few different states, mainly in the south, Mississippi, down there, got involved, and they wanted to raise the voice of enlisted. They knew there were some concerns about the way things were going in the National Guard, uh, legislation, uh, benefits that they thought the National Guard should have that could put them on par with the active duty, and so they started their own association in the state. Pretty soon they felt like this needed to be a national thing. And so Ingus was formed in 1972, and we now have chapters all over the United States. We have 55 chapters in, 40, in 54 states and territories, plus we have one national champ chapter, which is called our Title X chapter for those people who are on Title X tours. They can join there. Um, each state has its own is, is its own nonprofit organization. Ingus, at the national level, we are a 501c19 veteran organization, and we have a 501c3 nonprofit as well. But each state uh, also, they fall under our umbrella, but they also operate autonomously. Uh, we are the only military organization that works for benefits for National Guard. There is no other military service organization out there that works specifically for benefits for National Guard soldiers and airmen. So that's what we do, and we represent you on Capitol Hill and in the Pentagon. Right. Our organizational structure, so like any other organization, we have a president. I have national officers, which include the vice president, a secretary, uh, and, and uh, the treasurer. Uh, we are also have a good number of committees that do our work throughout the year. And then the Executive Council, I'll talk about them on my next slide. And then I talked about state associations. And we have a national office staff. So we have five dedicated people who work in Washington, D.C. and our national office staff. And there's some pictures of some of us. All right. So this is the area. This is the way across the United States how Ingus is developed. Now, did all of you make it to an area, what was called an area caucus? So if you didn't know what that was, everybody made it to an area caucus, so you fat figured out, you know what state you're from, and every state falls into an area. We have seven different areas. So I know on the Army side, I suppose on the Air side too, they have, there are, the National Guard has regions, and you compete in your best warrior competitions and stuff by your region. We're similarly uh, organized that way, and, but we call ours areas. So we have seven areas across the United States, each area in your area caucus, you probably would have seen probably two or for sure should have been three directors sitting up at the front. So they are elected by the members of that area, those states that are in that area, to represent them at the national level. And so we have an executive council, which I'm the president of, and those three directors, we meet quarterly to, and so the area directors bring their information up from the states, we give out information and they, they are the liaison between the state and the National Association. Those area directors serve two-year tours, uh, and then they can be re-elected re up to uh, two additional times. So, you can, like I said, that's how the areas work. All right. The auxiliary. So, you may not know, we also have an auxiliary. So, the auxiliary is made up of, if you have a spouse, um, significant other, they can all, family members, they can become members of our auxiliary. And auxiliary, we say they stand by us side by side. They work on a lot of things for us because not only do, when we get benefits for the mem military members, a lot of those benefits also affect the family. And so our auxiliary works with us on legislative things. If we put out a call and say, we're working on a specific bill to get it passed in Congress, those family members also will write to their congressman, and it amplifies and in increases the voice and the number of people that are writing to Congress on that specific bill. So this is our auxiliary president, uh, Angela Kennebec. She's from Iowa. Anybody in Iowa here? They're probably all out working. Okay, oh, 
Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's take a moment here. Let's take a moment. Come on. Sergeant Major fails. This is Command Sergeant Major Rachel Fails. The state Command Sergeant Major for Iowa. So if you want to just say hello for a minute. Okay. We'll let her talk right now. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me up here. I know I'm on the schedule. Um, but I do appreciate uh, everybody being here, taking the time to come to Iowa and participate in this country, uh, our conference. Um, how many of you, all you guys first timers? All right, what a great, great showing of participation from all of the states in our professional development forum. Uh, Mr. Ed Brown, uh, uh, President uh, Craig, and the Executive Council put a lot of time and effort into having a great professional development forum to introduce all of you to what INGUS is, what our organization, what our association does in support of our soldiers, airmen, families, and, uh, and our retirees. They are on the front lines fighting for us as, uh, as we navigate through legislative um, procedures and working with our uh, representatives on Capitol Hill to make sure that our voice is heard for um, ensuring that uh, we get our benefits, we get the status, and uh, um, we get the equipment that we need to be able to do the jobs that, uh, that they want us to do. So uh, I want to welcome all of you to Iowa. I'm going to have some more welcome comments at the, uh, the general session. But uh, thank you for, again, coming for this uh, professional development forum. Um, one thing I would hope that all of you get out of this couple days that you're here is as you look around to your right and left, front and back, is building relationships, building that network among yourselves. Um, you know, the, uh, the Army, but especially the Army National Guard, is a pretty small place. You will work together again at some point in the future. And so this is a great first opportunity, if you haven't done a lot um, outside of your states, to get to know uh, those from the other states in your region but really the other states that make up the, and territories that make up the 54. And the other piece I would tell you, um, don't be scared, but you know, the Air National Guard is not, are not bad people. So Army, you can, you can get to know them too. Learn about what they do. Air Guard, same thing. Uh, you'll find that we have a lot of similarities in, uh, in how we operate and the things that we do and what's important to us, um, but you're gonna learn a lot about what, uh, what each of us provide uh, to the fight. And lastly, I would tell you that uh, one of the other things that I hope you get out of this conference and your participation is learn how that you can make a difference within your organization, within your unit, and especially within your state and at your Nash or your state association. Um, I, I'm a absolutely firm advocate for our enlisted association, both at the state level and what the national provides for value for all of us as we continue to serve um, and after we leave service. And they make sure that we continue to be valued for what we have done during our service. So um, I look forward to meeting all of you tonight at the welcome night, tomorrow night at the junior, uh, junior enlisted night and uh, letting you see Camp Dodge on Tuesday night for the All Areas Night and showcase uh, some of the things that we have here in Iowa for you to enjoy. So um, I'll be around all week. Uh, I'll warn you, we have the 54 State Command Sergeant Majors um, for a workshop here in Iowa also this week, so you'll get to interact with uh, our state CSMs from all the states and territories, so yours will be here. Make sure you look them up and talk to them. Let them know how this uh, conference is doing, what you're learning, and uh, um, make sure your uniform looks good, okay? Because <laughs> they'll be looking for you. So does anybody have any questions of me? Nope, nobody wants to ask questions in a big room. So, okay, well I will see you again at 1300 at the, uh, at the opening ceremony. Have a, good, uh, have a good week, and I'll be checking in with you. Thanks. Thank you, Sergeant Major Fails. All right, going back. 
So I talked about having a national office staff. Our national office is in Washington, D.C. Where else would you want to be if you're working on legislative items? And so we are right on Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, we actually, if anybody's ever been to the National Guard Memorial Building, uh, right on the corner of Massachusetts Avenue, looks right at the Capitol. Uh, we're on the eighth floor of the building. And so we've been there about three years now. And in August, the National Guard Officers Association is in that building. So we like to call it the Ingus Building. You know, they call it the Nogus Building, but you know, we're there. So if you ever get to DC, uh, feel free to come in the building and look around. They've got a real nice museum down on the bottom floor. Come up to the eighth floor and visit us. All right, and this is our national office staff. So you can see, like I said, we've got executive directors in the middle, Frank Yoakum, retired sergeant major, and then uh, two legislative directors, a deputy, a membership chair, and a marketing business person that works for us. All great staffs. So like I mentioned before, one of our primary things that we work on is legislative. So each year, Ingus works on legislative issues to benefit National Guard members. Most of those, or a lot of those, come from this conference. All year long, out in the states, uh, members are coming up and finding, coming across issues where their benefits are not equal to active duty, or something is wrong, or they want a new benefit, and so they put together what we call resolutions. Those resolutions come to the conference here through a process, and I believe you're going to get a briefing on that, at least the professional development will later, uh, about our legislative process and how those resolutions work. But many of those, that, like I said, it comes up from the membership through the resolutions, and then this front area here, you will see later, this is where all of our get delegates sit. And that's why there's name tags across the front for the different states. Those are that you'll be able to tell from there how many delegates each state has. Like Mississippi, there's like tons of chairs back there because they have a lot of delegates. Other states, it's all based on their membership at the end of last year. That determines how many delegates. And it's those delegates that vote on those resolutions on behalf of the members to tell our national office staff then what legislative actions we want them to take, what is important to us, and what they need to work on on Capitol Hill. And so we also host every year, and usually in February, March timeframe, what we call a Storm the Hill, where our members can come to DC and we have a big workshop um, and then we give some classes about legislative work, what's going on on the Hill, and then those members from each state actually make appointments and go out and visit with their elected officials on Capitol Hill, your senators, your congressmen, um, and talk about issues that are important to the National Guard. So that's a lot of, a lot of the work that we do and, and one of our primary things that we work on. As far as legislative goals, these are some of the things that we've been working on this last year, and I'm not going to go through each one of them, but some of these may, you may recognize or think, you know, that's something that I could get behind. Early retirement credit under 12304B orders. You know, they changed some of the um, law on that to give other things, but we still do not have early retirement credit if you served on a 12304B order. Federal tuition assistance for the Air National Guard. That was a resolution here at our conference that passed the by the delegates last year for Ingus to work on and help move it along so that Air National Guard uh, personnel can receive federal TA, because right now they can't. The Army Guard can, every other reserve component can, but the Air Guard soldiers could not, or airmen could not. All right, um, so anyway, there's a few other things. Like I said, I don't want to go into take a lot of time and go into all of those, but those are some of our priorities for this year. And every year they change based on what the members tell us and based on what is going on and what we think we can get past. All right, membership. So we'll talk about membership. Um, our membership fluctu fluctuates right now between about 35,000 and 40,000 members. Uh, when you look at the entire National Guard, so what are we National Guard-wise? For over 400,000. Uh, then throw in all of the retirees who also can be members of Ingus. You know, we're less than 10% of our potential. So membership is something of a professional organization, and, and probably some of you belong to Association of the United States Army, Air Force Sergeants Association, some of those others as well. But, you know, Ingus is the one that we would like, if you're not a member, we would hope that you would choose to join us. 
and increase those numbers, the more numbers we have, the stronger our voice on Capitol Hill. Now, we always go and we say that we're representing all, all National Guard, soldiers, airmen across the 54, regardless of whether you're a member or not, but it still helps to have paid memberships. So we have a number of membership classes, annual and life. Uh, obviously, those are what they sound like. Uh, if you pay a life membership, then you never have to pay again, and you're with us. Uh, every state has a little bit different, you know, because I said we're all 54 different state associations as well. So where Arizona's uh, annual membership is normally $20 a year, another state may have it as 15, or some may have it as 35. They have different structures, so you have to go to your state association to join. And then we have some other honorary associate members, which would be officers, uh, significant others, and corporate members. So my last bullet on this one is tell your story and tell our Inga story. So you're here at the conference, uh, many of you obviously for the first time, and so hopefully as Sar uh, Sergeant Major Fails talk, you get something out of this. And so I would ask you, please, when you go back to your home states, talk about this conference. Talk about what you learned, talk about the good time you had, because there will be some evening events and some, a lot of fun that we have, we work hard but we also have a lot of fun. And so talk about that, talk about what you've learned about Ingus while you're here this week, and ask other members to, to join. I think we always find that there's kind of a groundswell after conference, it's kind of our rejuvenation point where everybody really gets enthused about the association again. We just need to keep that going all year long and continue to tell our Ingus story and what we do and why we're out there. Um, some benefits of membership, uh, if you don't know, so if you're a member of Ingus, we give over $200,000 in scholarships away every year. Uh, these are some, we have cash scholarships as well as we have college and institutions who give us full ride scholarships to give to our members. Um, this year, we're going to, at the uh, banquet on Wednesday night, and most of you should be there, we will have those colleges come up on stage and award those full ride scholarships to a number of our members. Um, I, I lost track, I don't even know how many there are, probably uh, maybe 10 or 12 full ride scholarships. So as a member, you can apply for those. And not only can you apply, but in, for almost all of them, your spouse or dependent children can apply. So if you say, I already got my degree, well, how about sending your spouse or a child to the college on Ingus? Okay, so that's a good, one of our big benefits. Health, vision care, a, everybody that's in here, and this is something we started two years ago, we have a partnership with the Association of the United States Army. So anybody who's an Ingus member is also a member automatically of AUSA, even Air Guard. So you ha do have the option of opting out, but you just have another professional organization membership, and with that, you get any discounts that they give to their members. So then they have a ton of discounts, so it's kind of an extension of that. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a 501c3, uh, and that is our nonprofit that we call We Care for America. Uh, this was started many years ago, and it is an emergency relief program for soldiers and airmen of the National Guard. And so if you have, or one of your soldiers has some catastrophic thing that happens, uh, you know, loss of home, whatever, fire, and they need a little bit of cash, they can put in for an emergency relief grant from Ingus and receive it. Now, right now, those grants only, are only $500, but as we try and build that fund and get additional money, we're hoping that we can give more than that. That also has another arm that we uh, started up a couple of years ago when so hurricane, not Hurricane Katrina, uh, the floods in Louisiana were in 2016. And there were a lot of soldiers that were out there and they were assisting soldiers or assisting citizens in the Baton Rouge area. Well, at the same time, they were losing their own homes and having significant flood damage from that flood. That happened to occur at the same time that we were in New Orleans for the 2016 Ingus National Conference. During that one week period, we collected $84,000 in donations from our members at the conference, 
corporate partners, people sitting at home, gave money to Ingus, and we turned around and gave that money to the Louisiana National Guard to give those funds to, to their soldiers and airmen in Louisiana who had lost their homes or had significant damage as a result. So that's the kind of thing that We Care does. And so we're always looking for donations and way to increase that, but we continue to do that. We did something similar the next year, because, and, and knock on wood, we're not gonna have any hurricanes this week, hopefully, but um, we try and be there to help our members. Communication, so there's lots of different ways that we communicate with our members. We try not to overtax your emails and stuff like that, but we have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the other thing I'll say as a benefit, in addition to any national benefits, each of your state has benefits that they give to National Guard members. And your state associations are the ones who probably have worked for those to get, you know, like free license plate, free car registrations. Uh, I, you can go on and on. Different states have uh, tuition assistance, state tuition assistance. Almost every state in the nation now has that because a couple of them started it and now almost everybody has it. I think, I think uh, Arizona, we may be the only holdout, but we're working hard to get that changed. Oregon got that passed last year as a state benefit. All right, okay, so there we go. There's the list of scholarships. I had it in my slides. So you can see the number of the colleges that are giving them and, and uh, what they're giving. And those deadlines are one May of every year, or usually around that time. And we, if you're a member, you'll get those email notices. All right. Okay, so we talked about, uh, this is our Ingus website, so www.ingus.org. A couple of things I just want to point out on there. There's a lot of information. If you haven't been there before, check it out. Uh, if you want to join, Think about it this week, and if you're not a member and want to join, this is a good time to join. Use the membership tab. Um, about us, that tab talks, has our scholarship committee information. Uh, the conference tab, or the events tab, has all of our conference information, as well as information about the legislative workshop. The resources tab is a jobs tab. So we also have a couple of corporate partners that we work with who provide jobs and job services and resume writing, different things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check out our resources tab. And then we have a document library that's way up on the top in the blue. And if you're looking for copies of documents, reports for things that happen here or any other time, we store those documents in that library. So there's a lot of other information, but that's kind of the, some of the highlights. All right, so the conference, where we're here. We've got attendees, like I said, from every state uh, and district. Delegates, I kind of already talked about that, so I'm not going to hit that. Professional development, that's a lot of you. And speakers, this week we've got a lot of great speakers that are going to come out and talk to us. Uh, senior National Guard leaders, uh, DOD, VA leaders, and association representatives. If you've gotten the schedule already and looked at it, um, Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Troxell, Joint Chiefs of Staff, SEA will be here to speak to you, and I think he's also coming in or going to be on the senior enlisted panel to talk to the PD specifically. So that's a, a highlight uh, as well. All right, so this is just kind of a simple rundown um, day by day. We'll have the opening today, opening business session, roll call of the states. So I talked earlier about, you know, everybody's proud of their state. So at the roll call of the states, and I'm not sure that the PD is going to be in there, unfortunately, for that, but that's when everybody gets to show off their state stuff and hoop and holler and, and report that they are present for the conference. Um, Monday, that's when we'll do the senior enlisted leaders panel, the open night junior enlisted event. Tuesday, we have Army and Air National Guard breakouts, so we've got... Command Chief Master Sergeant Anderson for the Air Guard, Command Sergeant Major John Sampa, the Army National Guard CSM, who will hold separate breakouts, Army and Air, and you'll get your branch-specific information from them. Uh, that night is the All-Area Hospitality Night, and then Wednesday, of course. Wednesday is our big day for voting on the delegate floor. And we'll actually, once we start voting, we seal the floor where only the delegates can be up here, everybody else is in the back. And we vote on those resolutions, we vote on bylaws changes, 
Uh, we'll vote on where future conferences are going uh, and those kind of things. We'll swear in our new directors because we're also having area elections. So if you hear people running for office, that's what that is. Um, and the all, we'll wrap up with the all-state banquet on Wednesday night. So at this point, when I talk about the um, schedule, got our treasurer, who I mentioned before. This is Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Burris from Alaska. Alaska? Okay, Alaska. All right. I got two here. Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to let him talk because this year uh, we've had an app, an Ingus app before. We changed over and now we have a new app. So I'm going to let him walk you through that as well as our SCHEDGE program, which is the agenda. And I'll kind of walk you through how to get to our agenda so you know what's going on. All right. Yep. I think I need the clicker, huh? Do I, do I really need this? Can you guys hear me back there? No. 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 Dang it. I really do hate mics. So thanks for being here. I hope you'll have as good a time as I did at my first Ingus conference. You know, everybody goes, these old guys up here are speaking, right? It's all us old people. Well, I was a young person in 1994. How many of y'all were born in 94? Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. That's why you have to get involved in the junior enlisted and become the leaders of this organization. It's time to get you out here. We need the help. It's great. It's your organization as much as it is mine or anybody else's up here. So you'll always get a membership speech from me too. So get involved, please. It was great. North Carolina put me on a C-130 and flew me all the way to Portland, Oregon. Yeah, got to love that. 13 hours, four stops and two, cha two plane changes. Yes. What happened? <laughs> Maybe a long day. So, so our goal here is to make sure you have in your hand all the information we can possibly give. See, there's a divine power. Um, so we do have a new app. It's called Ingus Mobile. You can find that out there on the App Store or the Google Play Store eventually. Should be on the Google Play Store within the next 24 hours, we hope. Uh, there was a submission issue, but we got it submitted and pushed out, so we're hoping it'll show up within the next 24 hours. So I'm gonna give you a couple of options to look at some stuff. All right, so pending approval, see? We were hoping, we were there yesterday going, please get approved, it didn't happen. All right, so it has all kinds of cool links as you'll open it and see. Please go in, play with it, look, look under the conference. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Is it me? It usually is. So um, one of the tabs says conference. Under that's where you'll find your schedule and things like that. Of course, all you folks with Android devices can't use it, but I have an option that you can use for the schedule. One complaint we've always gotten is the schedule is no good. It changes and it's printed, right? So we're trying to make sure we have this electronic schedule. As things change, we're updating it automatically. So, Sketch is the name of the program. It will allow you to create a login, build your own personal schedule from this, and take the 150 items that are here this week and tailor it down to just what you need to see and just what you're gonna attend. So it's a clean way to, to use it and we can keep current info out there for you. I, I'm not a big slide guy. So why I use it, I've told you that. You don't have to use it. There are some printed copies. You may have to mug somebody to get one because there are that few. So I don't even know where they're at. Chair Simpson, where can they find schedules? I'm sorry? Simpson left. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. See? So down at the registration area or the Ingus booth, did you say? No. no. Or you can print off of the schedule. You can print your own off the schedule app if that's what you want to do. I, I do not recommend it. Stay with the electronic version. That's what it's for. It's to get you the info. This is what it looks like. You can download this app. For those with Android, go
Go into Sketch, do a search for Ingus, and you'll find the 48th National Conference. I always put a question slide. Email me, text me. I'm more than help you, happy to help you with anything. Everybody and his brother has my phone. I want to make sure the rest of you guys had it. So please, anytime you need something, you see us around, stop us, ask us questions. We're here for you and for the membership at large. That's our job as being elected members of the association. Oh, and I think it's the president's turn again. Or do, do you want me to introduce? Or I'd prefer you. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we're, before I get back on uh, my last couple of slides, I'd like to introduce to you the Army National Guard, Sergeant Major John Sampa. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Great day to be an Army National Guard soldier, serving your state and the United States of America. And I didn't leave my airman out. It's good you all here as well, too. But, uh, <laughs> Karen come, asked me to come in and say a few words to you all since this is your first time being here. Uh, it's, it does, you know, enlighten my spirit to know that we have young folks who are willing to get involved with the Army National Guard and Association and Ingus because it's going to be you all to drive this force forward in the future. I have less days in this uniform than I do have in the uniform itself. And so my whole point is that to try to make the organization much better than what I found it. And that's what we all do, no matter what capacity we serve in. Make it better than what you found it. And so that's why you're here today, I'm sure. Because you are interested in making the Army National Guard or the Air National Guard or the entire National Guard better than what you, what you uh, see it in today or improve on or how to get involved, how to become a senior leader uh, in your organization. So it's great that you're all here. I'm bringing 100 Command Sergeant Majors around the state here. So you're going to see a whole bunch of Sergeant Majors running around here in a Class B uniform throughout the conference. I, I challenge you all to, to pull him to the side and talk to him, especially if he or she is from your state, uh, because that's why they're here, to imp embark their knowledge, their experience on you and uh, what you can do uh, as future leaders of, of the National Guard itself. So again, welcome. Have fun while you're here. Don't get in no trouble. I must say that, being the Command Sergeant Major, who? Because we all are ambassadors, not only for the National Guard, but we're ambassadors for the United States Army, we're ambassadors for the United States Air Force. Because the, the citizens that we work for, that we serve, don't know what your organization is by the uniform you're wearing. They just know you're in the Army and you're in the Air Force. So that's why we all got to be professional no matter where we are and what we're doing, because they expect us to be that, okay? And so uh, have fun. Watch out for your battle buddy, because uh, we all want you all to go back to your respective states the same way you came. And I look forward to uh, talking to you all during the week. Come by and grab me, take a picture, whatever the case may be, and uh, we all have fun. I want you to enjoy your time while you're here. I don't want you to, to waste your time here. And that's why the Sergeant Majors are here, because we want to help Ingus make this an event that you want to come to, whether you are on the Army dime, the Air Force dime, or your own dime. We want to ensure that this is an event that you want to come to and put on your schedule to come to every year while you're serving as well as after you serve as well, too. So, again, thank you all, and let's have fun. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Always so important to have the support of the senior leaders, and I know those of you that are out in the States will understand that, that without them, you know, it's very hard for us to keep things going, and so we need their support, and they need our support. They need us to be here and doing what we're doing to push these issues through to Capitol Hill, because a lot of times in their positions, they can't do it. So that's why the Enlisted Association is so important, as well as their support. All right, I got, I think, two more slides. All right, I just want to talk a little bit about some other things that we go, got going on with Ingus, just so you know, uh, some kind of new stuff. Operation Vet Care is something. So if you think of um, Toys for Tots, who do you think of? Marines. The Marines. The Marines run Toys for Tots. 
So we have in Ingus Operation Vet Care. So we want to make the National Guard, Ingus, uh, well known for helping out with veterans activities and helping our veterans. So this, what this talks about is a program that we started a couple of years ago where we encourage states to, to go out into VA homes, VA hospitals, uh, vet centers, different activities, stand, you know, homeless stand down in your state, those kind of things, and assist veterans. And what do you do? You can provide a meal. We even have gift cards that we can send to your state so that you can take those gift cards to the veterans' home, pass them out to the veterans, buy socks, buy underwear, buy things that they need, and get them to veterans. And so it's kind of that community involvement because that's what the National Guard is all about. It's about being in our communities and stuff. And so Ingus wants to perpetuate that, and so we have Operation Vet Care to kind of help the states move along. And like I said, we provide those gift cards to you and let help you go out and do those kind of uh, charitable acts in your state. Junior enlisted committee, and, and I'm gonna let Tika talk about this. I'm not gonna get into her thunder here. Fitness challenge. So last year at the conference, one of, you know, I, I mentioned that we listen to our members and we take our direction from our membership and the areas and we have those resolutions that come up. We also have motions. And so last year on the, the floor of the conference, we had a motion from a member that Ingus should start a fitness committee uh, because, you know, we're National Guard, that's what we do. Well, I'm retired, so I'm not doing that anymore. But I know you do, I know you do, So, and that's important uh, to keep us in good fitness shape. So we started this thing called the Fitness Challenge. I appointed the committee chair, and I'm gonna let him talk to you about that and get information out on that, but you will see uh, out on the concourse here that we've got BeaverFit, who brought in some ACFT equipment for us. So I'm not sure if his challenge is gonna involve that, but it could. Um, there's gonna be some challenge. Some of that may be done out at the um, all area hospitality night um, in the evening. And we will also try and we're, we're putting together something that will come out to each state and asking each state to do a fitness event sometime during the next year. So there'll be more to come on that. Uh, we're updating our website. So you saw a little bit about what it looked like. If, you know, but we are trying to get that um, updated and refreshed, and Chief Burris already talked to you about our new Ingus app. The membership push, so this week, we, we wanted to do something to motivate those of you who are not currently members of Ingus to join. And hopefully, you know, like everybody said, what you've seen here this week will get you enthused and want, you, want to make you join. But, for those that do, we got a gift for you. And I thought I was gonna have a sample of what it is, but I don't. Um, so I'll just tell you, so anybody that joins this week, and remember, you'll have to go to the Ingus website or you can get with your state president, if you know who that is. Go to the website, join, become a member, pay whatever your state dues are, and then bring that email that confirms you became a member to the junior enlisted night or to the Ingus booth and you will get you know those nice thermal bottles that everybody carries around. We have those. We have a blue one and a black one. So there's a uniform you told you would be able to carry it. Um, so free gift if you join this week if you're not currently a member. So that's our membership push for this week. Ways and means, so we do a lot of other things to uh, try and raise funds. Um, and we do some just for the fun of it and to, to get our marketing and our brand out there. One thing we've done, and, and you'll find at the Ingus booth, is we did a cookbook. So some recipes are for sale. Um, we have Ingus branded apparel at our um, booth. And the other thing that we did over a year ago, last November, we rolled out, well, Prior to November, we commissioned an artist. And I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Larry Selman. He's a pretty uh, famous military artist, does a lot of you know, historical type paintings and stuff like that. So we decided that we wanted to do something representative of our enlisted force to really showcase you know, all of the dedication, everything that our enlisted members have done for the country. 
And so he commissioned this artist, Larry Selman, and last November, uh, he painted an oil, well, he painted an oil portrait, and last November we unveiled that um, up in Pennsylvania at their state conference. And so now we have those prints that we are selling. So my next slide is the, this is the portrait that we commissioned and had done. We call it Enlisted Guardians, Our Legacy, Our Future. And, you know, my intent and desire of this project was that, you know, any soldier or airman can look at this painting and see themselves there. You're serving, uh, whether it's Army Air, we have all different kinds of MOSs, specialties, uh, equipment, um, you know, and our, our National Guard motto, always ready, always there. And so this is our portrait. Um, and like I said, we had prints made. So you can buy one of those prints for $25 at our booth. If you would like to take one home with you, we do have, I think, 100. So I don't know how long that will last. But um, like I said, they're nice for gifts. Uh, we have a lot of people that are getting them to have framed and put in their armory at their unit. And this is a limited edition print, which means they're all numbered. So, and they come with a certificate of authenticity. So, I mean, very high quality, and there's actually one that's framed at the booth, so you can see what it would look like as framed. But just want to share that with you, because like I said, Ingus, we wanted to give something back uh, and really show the dedication of our enlisted force. And, and hopefully this painting is representative of that. And we're very proud of it and wanted to share it with everybody. So uh, $25 for a print from a well-renowned renowned artist is, is a pretty good deal. But anyway, so you'll see that. And uh, like I said, hope you'll enjoy that. All right. That was my last slide. And I have no idea. I wasn't watching the clock. So hopefully I didn't go too far over. Um, if you have any questions for me, you can contact me anytime at president at ingus.org. All of our email addresses are set up that way. So the, vice, the treasurer is treasurer.ingus.org. Our national office general email is ingus at ingus.org. So you, that makes it very simple for any question you might have about membership or anything else. And there's also our 1-800 our number. So at this point, um, do I have any questions before I turn it over to our enlisted committee chair? Any questions? All right, good. Again, thank you very much for being here. Um, you know, like Sergeant Major said, we just, it's very important to us that you're here and we appreciate it. And again, when you go back home, I hope you'll share what you've learned here. Um, and, and all the events and everything that happens because we're working for you as hard as we can and, and we need your support right back. So, all right, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Staff Sergeant Ritt. Talk about junior enlisted stuff. And I think, why don't you come up, um, Dean? So real quick, I just wanna introduce Command Sergeant Major Dean Kennebec is from, also from Iowa, and he is the advisor to the Junior Enlisted Committee. So, I don't know if you want to say anything, or we'll just... No, no. that's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn it over to Tika. Here we go. Thank you. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, really quick, I got my notes here. Make sure I stay on track and stay on schedule and don't wander off too far. So... By now, I know better because I was standing up here in about this same place and by God, West Virginia last year. So, who was in this briefing last year? Is it? Oh, hey, y'all. Hey. So, rule of thumb I'm Tika, Tika Britt. I'm from Alabama, and I want to welcome you all to the 48th Enlisted National Guard Conference. So what we're going to start on is me and my purpose and you. So I have one job. That's it, one job. I am the junior enlisted chair for Ingus, which means I work for all of you. So that means if you don't know who I am, 
That means I'm wrong, and that means you're wrong. So, Ms. Adrienne here has my cards, and I'm gonna pass out my cards to everybody here, because I would not be here if it wasn't for you. And on that card, she's gonna pass those out to you, on that card <laughs> has my contact number. Now that contact number on that card is this beautiful Alabama Crimson Tide cover with the Wonder Woman pop top on it. Pop top on it. That's what this number is. And we do that intentionally to let you know that we're always available for you, always there for you, and we're here to meet you at your need. So if any time you need anything, text this number, call this number, day or night, I don't care. Just let me know who you are. Don't start texting or calling and asking questions, and I have no idea who you are. So when you text me, say, Staff Sergeant Tika Britt from Alabama, and then go on with what it is just you want. Next thing is, okay, so I told you I'm from the great state of Alabama. Um, the last almost two years, I was the first female at the infantry battalion in Alabama. Interesting story about that, but long story short, it's because of this organization. This organization has gave me a voice and an opportunity I would not have had otherwise. It has propelled my career um, personally and professionally to do great things across the United States. So with that in mind, coming up here on Monday, Monday night for the Junior Enlisted event, there's gonna be a big push for membership. Is our membership chair here? Mm, I don't see him offhand. There's gonna be a big push for membership. So those of you that are not members, certainly Monday night will be a great opportunity for you to join this amazing, amazing organization. And as an incentive, on Wednesday, whenever we have our last little hoop de raw, um, you will receive a JEC conference coin from me for everybody that is a member of INGUS as a thank you for attending and participating in this conference. Um, your purpose. So this week is going to be a lot of feeding through a water hose. Take a breather. Calm down. Nobody's expecting you to remember everything. All we are doing is expecting you to take this information back with you and have it available for your guardsmen if you could need it. I'm not an education person, but my first two conferences here, I had gathered so much education, information, that people came to me when they had problems or they needed help or they needed additional information about whatever their issue or problem was. So your purpose here is not to learn, memorize everything, it's to gather information and have it available to assist other airmen and soldiers within your units and wings. Um, the Ingus app, has everybody downloaded the Ingus app? Everybody got it, everybody got it. If you don't got it, you're wrong and you probably don't know what you're doing. Because that Ingus app is gonna be your number one source of information. Whenever you're wandering around lost, which I've seen some of y'all doing that this morning, when you're wandering around like this, and I have to stop you, hey, what, what do you want? What are you doing? What are you looking for? You probably didn't download your Ingus app because it'll tell you exactly where you're supposed to be and exactly what time you're supposed to be there. So make sure you get that app. The Junior Enlisted Committee, that's made up of myself, Ms. Adrian Collins right here, and Cody Smith, who is in California and unable to be with us today. So if you see myself or Ms. Adrian, please feel free, we'll be having these nice little go name badges on, feel free to stop us and ask us a question or two if you need to. Um, the JEC night is Monday night, Junior Enlisted Committee night, and what that does is promote Junior Enlisted camaraderie, and it also raises funds for We Care for America. President Craig did a great job introducing We Care for America to you, so we'll have raffle tickets available, and we'll be giving out 
giving away amazing prizes um, for those raffles for We Care for America. Um, let me see where we at. Mm. So, participation. We want you to come and learn and grow, but for me, I need you to participate. I don't need you to be a knot on a log. I don't need you to just sit there. I need you to want to do something, especially the, of you that have already become members. I'm expecting greatness. I'm expecting for you to do more and show yourself more within this organization and within your community. So if you need something to do, just come find me. I assure you, I can find something for everyone in this room to do, particularly on our JEC event, because I'm going to need a lot of help on that event. So if anybody wants to participate in the Junior Enlisted Committee, whether it be on the Junior Enlisted Night or on some of the other endeavors we have going on, just come see me. Our Junior Enlisted Committee meeting is at 1300 on Monday. So if anybody is interested in coming to the Junior Enlisted Committee meeting to find out what you can do, what we currently have going on, um, what in direction we're going in, you can do that at 1300 on Monday. I think it's room 310, if my memory serves me correctly. But it's on the Ingus app, what room it's in. So if you want to make sure of that. Um, so a few things about the Junior Enlisted Committee. Um, we had a pretty busy year the last year or so that I've been chair. Um, we commissioned these um, beautiful junior enlisted coins. By the way, this is not the conference coin and not the one you will be receiving for um, becoming a member, but I'm going to pass this here around. I want this back. The beautiful junior enlisted coin is air on one side and army on the other side. This coin here that was commissioned, we did a nationwide coin competition because we wanted to be fair, equal, and get everybody's input. After all, this is the one and only junior enlisted coin. There's not another one not like it and doesn't serve any other purpose besides commending junior enlisted personnel and those in support of the junior enlisted committee. So that coin there is an Army in Air coin that the winner was Staff Sergeant Jonathan Wilson was the winner of the coin competition that we held, and that was the coin for us. So that is our coin. And if you are the Junior Enlisted Committee uh, chairman for your state, there's a form that you can request those coins, that you can pass out at like your best warrior competitions, your state conferences, um, any other events that you have going on to congratulate or show appreciation to your guardsmen. Um, I think that's about it. Our biggest things that we're focusing on right now is we're getting some shirts made some of those worker proof workout shirts made. Um, Steel Serving Promos is helping us create those shirts and as soon as we get those, those are gonna be another awesome junior enlisted exclusive item. Those great shirts that we're gonna have made there. Also, um, our current program that we're on right now is called Reach Across America where it's just junior enlisted getting more active within their organization and within your community um, of your hometown. Just making sure you're visible and your presence is seen. Mm, okay, so that's it for me. I want you all to have fun, stay alert. You're gonna be sitting through a lot of briefings and a lot of, uh, a lot of briefings. We're just gonna leave it at that. So put some of them little round white mints in your pocket so you can pop on them, um, eat those so that you're not doing like this right here during the briefings. And stay alert, have fun, enjoy yourselves, be safe. And don't forget, if you see us wandering around, just come say hey. Volunteer your services. I love volunteers. And that's about it for me. Are we good? Oh, any questions? Any issues? Any concerns? Yeah, you way back there in the back. Oh, you didn't get a card. Oh, I'll get you a car. I got you. And matter of fact, that Davenier gentleman right there, Mr. David Thompson, my wingman, he has my number right there in his phone, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to give it to you. All right, anybody else? 
oh, thank you. See, and this is why I have an amazing co-chair right here. This is why. So the theme for the JEC night is, does anybody know what the theme for the JEC night is? I think we got, we got one here in the front. Yes. What's the theme for the JEC night? It's supposed to be like um, cowboy. Kind of like it is. Thank you. Country showdown. Country showdown is the theme for the JEC night. So if you didn't get that memo before, you probably don't have your cowboy, cowgirl, gunslinging attire ready. So just come as close as you can to country wear, and if not, throw in your sneakers and a t-shirt and we'll still welcome you all the same. So Country Showdown is our theme. Um, we have a Facebook and Instagram page. So Junior Enlisted is the information for both of those if you want to check it out. And anybody else? See, that's another key point that your Junior Enlisted chair for your state or for your area should have put it out to you. The Junior Enlisted Committee night was Country Showdown and that you can come dress in your boots and your hat, but it's okay because we're going to have a nice little selfie booth there with a lot of stuff for you to try on, so we'll, we'll all fit in. We'll be good. Any other questions? Anybody, anybody? Okay, great. Well, I'm going to get down to the ribbon cutting before all of y'all get down so I can get a good seat. Um, is that it? Okay, we're good to go. See you later. Hey, thank you, thank You're you. Welcome. Thanks, thank you. Okay, and warp speed. I first need to ask if you are not on professional development orders, could you please move to the back of the room, please? The reason is, and if you're on PD orders in the back of the room, please move forward. We want to get a, as close of a head count we can right now. Also, uh, we're going to be leaving here in just a minute to go downstairs as the uh, uh, professional development PD team comes forward. Uh, we're going to do a quick introduction. Uh, as they're moving forward, things that I would like you to remember. We are going to leave here in just a minute. We are going downstairs. Uh, when you first came up the ramp, the escalators, at the base of that, we're going to have a ribbon cutting that will launch the conference. Then after that, we encourage you to go back during your lunch up to the exhibitors and go through and... Uh, Please just give them a, a lot of attention because they're here in support of you. The other side to that is we're going to be back in this room at one o'clock for the beginning of the conference. And then after that, at 1430, most critical, 1430 downstairs in room 302, 303, 304, we are going to start our first professional development session together, similar as we are right now. And that's at 1430 downstairs, 302. So, um, so Major Young, you see there too? Okay. Um, if I could start with introducing the co-chair. The co-chair, uh, well, myself, you already got my name, Chief Ed Brown. Uh, this is Command Sergeant Major Retired Jim Allen. Uh, Sergeant Major Allen was the uh, SEL for the great state of uh, West Virginia, by God, in there somewhere. Is that correct? West, uh, West by God, Virginia. Then we have uh, Command Sergeant Major, the state Command Sergeant Major for the great state of Mississippi, uh, Sergeant Major Chris Young. Then we have two down. We have uh, our professional development point of contact for the Air National Guard, and that is Chief Master Sergeant, First Sergeant uh, Lorraine Kitzmiller. Uh, Chief Kitzmiller is the functional program manager for all First Sergeants in the Air National Guard. Then we have Senior Master Sergeant Hubbard. Senior Master Sergeant Hubbard, is he's tag teaming with the points of contact for all of that that is ANG specific. And then we have probably the most important person on our team, and that's Master Sergeant Chris Austin. And he is our IT guy. He's our go-to guy. And uh, just a good illustration that techs and masters, at least in the Air Guard, run it. 
And I would suggest the same for staff sergeants on the Army Guard have a huge part to play in making all this happen. So, okay, so we're gonna leave here. We're going downstairs, we're gonna do a ribbon cutting. We are, we are then going to go to lunch, visit exhibitors, be back in here at one o'clock. Um, I don't know that we can reserve that back corner back there when you first walk in the door, but if all of you want to sit together and if we could kind of take that over, when you come in that room, just go back in there. Um, there's going to be very few people that are not going to be in uniform that are going to be here for the conference other than PD. Now, we are going to have 128 Command Sergeant Majors, because Command Sergeant Major Sampa that you met earlier, uh, he has brought in his whole uh, state uh, CSM team and in a huge way, which is incredible. Uh, chief Anderson, the uh, Command Chief for the Air National Guard, is also going to be here, along with uh, Command Sergeant Major Truxell, who is the Command Sergeant Major for the Chairman of the uh, Chairman let me out here. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Thank you. Um, so, do we have a head count? Do we have one? How many, sir? 128 total. Can we see a show of hands of soldiers real quick? Show of hands of soldiers. Can we do a real quick count of how many Army Guard we have in the room? Approximate. Keep them up, please. When we went to, uh, when the Air Guard went to the Army uniform, it kind of, you all blend in together. So, which is a good thing. Okay, 59. Ma'am? Can you keep that number in your head? 59 soldiers in the room, okay? And we have 128 total. Now can we see a show of hands? Well, well, we could do, do you want to just do it that way? <laughs> we'll do the math. So that, what does that leave us? How many air guard? Now we break out the calculator. 69, okay. Before we break, I want to commend you um, because the cell phones, I didn't hear them go off in our section, and uh, that's real important to the people that are up here standing and talking. Okay, so remember that throughout the week. And also a side note, if for whatever reason you have an opportunity to ask someone a question, as that young man did back there, please stand up, give them your name, just very brief as to maybe their state, uh, but stand up. Please don't ask any questions from being in your seat. Is there anything really pressing before we let you go? Anything? Show of hands. Uh, some, may, some may not have a uniform yet. That's okay. We assume they're coming. Some may look different in a different uniform. That's okay. All we want and care about is that you're here, okay? We'll work through the, the small stuff. Team? 302, 303 at 1430. It's right behind the registration desk where you get the registration. So, I will tell you this, you're not going to find a, a team of better, uh, better leaders in our enlisted corps than these guys that are here to my left. Uh, just wonderful. So, Major Jim Allen and I have been uh, doing this for a few years now, and they just do not get any better. Uh, also, standing is our conference chair. The person that makes all this stuff happen behind the scenes, and that's uh, Chief Master Army retired Doug Simpson. Yeah. Doug, questions? Four minutes. Four minutes. Is that okay? Nothing else? Downstairs, uh, down by the escalators, and we will go ahead and do a ribbon cutting and launch this thing. And then you go to lunch, visit exhibitors. We see you at one o'clock back in here.